bring a word which I believe will not be c confined to this particular evening alone, but in the days to come, I believe this could also turn out to be a series that we can have from the presence of the Lord. It's going to be powerful. In the days to come, it's going to be a series probably. Let's see where the Lord takes it. I want to address the subject called hindrance. You know, preachers are not supposed to bring such, you know, theme that have got more a negative vibe to us, to this, you know, to it. But how many of you know this is a reality? Anybody knows what I'm talking about? Hindrance. Now, when we look at the word hindrance, I look through the pages of God's word, there are at least four different ways or different hindrance. At least four. Number one, it's purpose-induced hindrance. This is not negative. I'm not talking how hindrance ob obstructs purpose, but I'm talking about how purpose is a reason why the hindrance took place. God's purpose in your re life becomes a reason for some hindrance. That's number one. Number two, I would call it self-imposed hindrance. Now, I don't know if I can get there. Number three, Holy Spirit-directed hindrance. How many of you know not all hindrance are bad? Some hindrance comes from the Holy Spirit. Come on. Number four, satanic hindrance. So we have four hindrance that are presented in God's Word I would try to at least address one or two today. Let's see how the time would allow me to do that. But just let's get this straight into our hearts. Number one, it's purpose-induced hindrance. Number two, it is self-imposed hindrance. Number three, Holy Spirit-directed hindrance. Number four, satanic hindrance. Are you ready? Now, when you look at the word hindrance in the Greek, it's a military term. It's an army term. You know, this is what, how this is described in, in its Greek. Now, let me just bring that to you. The word in the Greek is a word which means cut down, strike, means to knock or cut into, to impede one's course by cutting off his way, hence to hinder, impede, thwart, or interrupt. It means to make progress slow or difficult. You know, in those days, when, the, when a country knows that uh, an army is coming towards them, in order to slow the advance of the, of the army that's coming towards them, they would cut the road or they would make hindrance on the road in order to slow down the advancing army. So when the road is now cut into or broken, you know, the army cannot come in that same pace. How many of you know when we talk about hindrance, most of the time it is not stopping. It is more about delaying. Come on. You know, our advance is delayed. Our, 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 our progress is delayed. And that's called hindrance. Hindrance particularly or primarily does not mean that it's coming to an end. It just means that the progress has now become slow. But today I want to address how we can overcome hindrance. Can I get a witness in the house of the Lord? So I'm going to talk about a life where we can overcome hindrance. And how many of you believe God wants us to be overcomers, that we can overcome hindrance in the name of Jesus. So I want to address at least three or four areas and maybe today at least one or two before we go on to the other ones in the days to come. So let me talk about the self or, or, or I'm sorry, purpose-induced hindrance. What do I mean by that? Where do I get that from? Now I want you to go to the book of Romans. Chapter 15, Romans 15. Let's read from 15 onwards. 
I want you to listen closely, please. Romans 15 and 15 onwards. But on some points, I've written to you very boldly, way of reminder, because of the grace given me by God. To be a minister of Christ, Jesus to the Gentiles, in that priestly service of the gospel of God, so that the offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. I don't have time to go there. In Christ Jesus, and I want to start here. In Christ Jesus, then I have reason to be proud of, the word is, I have reason to glory in my work for God. The one thing that I'm being proud of is what I did for God. Let me make this very clear. At the end of the day, everything else that we might try to boast upon means relatively insignificant. What really matters at the end of our life is the work that we did for the Lord. Can I get a witness in the house of the Lord? The work that was done for the Lord. So Paul says, I have reason to glory, to be proud, to boast, be boastful for my work for God. The next word. Now what does this work? For I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me to bring the Gentiles to obedience by word and by deed. So all that happened in my life, everything that I did, it was God working through me. I did not initiate it. I did not do it. It was God working through me. Let me tell you, if the purpose is of God, it is God who's going to work for the purposes to be accomplished. That's what Paul says. Now, let's go forward. So God accomplished. I'll come back to that in a minute or two. Let's go ahead. For I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me to bring the Gentiles to obedience by word and by deed. Now, how did God do this? By the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and all the way round about to Luricum, I have fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I fulfilled. And thus I make it my ambition to preach the gospel not where Christ has already been named, lest I build on someone else's foundation. But as it is written, those who have never been told of him will see, and those who have never heard will understand. This is the reason why I have often been hindered from coming to you. The reason that I was hindered is not personal. It is not because Satan hindered me. It is because there was another purpose of God that God was accomplishing through me. Till that purpose is accomplished, I could not come. I was hindered. Let me tell you, the best hindrance that you can have is when you're hindered for the sake of greater purposes. Now let me go deeper. Now Paul makes it very clear, it is not the devil hindering me. It was a purpose that I was involved in that hindered me from coming to you. Paul was a man who was very careful in both articulating and observing the purposes of God. He was not a person who would do something here and then jump to something else and then do something. It was not doing that was his paramount you know, objective. You know, I have to do something. I've seen people that gets involved in so many things, they stretch so much, they stretch so thin. They don't, at the end of the day, don't have any idea what in the world are they doing. But here is Paul saying, even though I had great desire to come to Rome, everybody who had a ministry in those days or anybody into any kind of public display of ambition would always want to go to Rome because that was the capital of the whole world. 
But Paul says, even though I have got the desire to go to Rome, I did not get to come to Rome. I was hindered because I was doing something that God had called me to do. Let me tell you something. This evening, the most important thing in our life is not doing things, but to do what God has called us to do in the season that God has called us to do. Can I get an amen in the house of the Lord? One, we have to be sure what God has called us to do. And two, we have to do what God has called us to do in the season that God has called us to do. Oh, you didn't hear me. Come on, can I see some future leaders who wants to accomplish the purpose of God for your life, for your family, in the season that God has appointed you to do? And because of that, I was hindered. That's a godly good hindrance. Many of us don't even know what it means to have a godly purpose-driven hindrance. Because we don't even have a purpose. So we don't know what hindrance. So for us, everything is of the devil. Come on. But let me tell you, if God has a purpose for you in Edmonton, He might hinder you from going to Rome. He might hinder you from going to another place because God has a purpose for your life. At the end of the day, let His purpose be fulfilled in our lives, in our church. Then somebody say an amen in the house of the Lord. That's a God-given hindrance. Come on, somebody say purpose-driven hindrance. Can you say it loudly? Purpose-driven Say it again, purpose-driven hindrance. Now I'm going to, sh why did God give me this word? Of all the words that I could have picked, I heard the word hindrance while I was meditating before Lord this afternoon or this morning. Why did God give this word? Because I'm here to say, some of you, the season and the purpose connected to that season is now coming to an end so God can release you to the next stage of your life in the name of Jesus. Can you shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord? God says, I'm releasing you to the next stage of your life because my purpose has been fully accomplished. But I want to bring three or four things that is essential when you have this hindrance. How to get over it. Because remember, if the purpose is not accomplished, you can pray, you can cry, you can fast, you can long, you can desire, but God says, I have few things that I need you to accomplish first. Come on, everybody becomes very quiet. We all get excited when we talk about more grand and more glorious and more glamorous future and prospect about something more ambitious. But let me tell you, God is not going to let you do half of what God has called you to do. He wants you to complete what He has asked you to do so He can release you in the next plan of God. Can somebody say yes today in the house of the Lord? He needs you to complete so He can release you to the next one. You don't have to be looking always over your shoulder to see if the work has been completed. That's kind of a very, very, you know, ineffective, ineffective or very, very, you know, un, what is the word, appealing way of living. You need to have a confidence. You're finished. Now what next? Young people, I want to challenge you today. You have to be very careful that you don't mess and go in circles doing a lot of things at the end of the day, accomplishing nothing. You need to come to a place where you know exactly what God has called you to do in this season and you're able to complete what God has called you to do so that God can send you, dispatch you to the next season in your life. Can I get a witness in the house of the Lord? God is a God of order. So let me go step by step. Can we come to verse number 17? How can somebody fulfill God's plan for their lives? Verse number 17. Number one, in Christ Jesus, then I have reason to be proud of my work for God. So Paul says, the only thing that I would talk about or I'm boastful is my work for God. Let me tell you, God is not in the business. I, I, I have to rephrase it. You know, I know God will answer your prayers when you have a need, when you have a desire, when you have a plan for your life. You know, all of us have got different, and Jesus taught us in, in, in the Lord's Prayer that we could bring our desires to God and say, God, or oh, our needs, give us today our daily bread. Now, that's not a problematic prayer. But I want you to understand 
you know, in this situation, what Paul is saying is so important. He has completely abandoned himself to one thing. That everything that happens in this life will be the work of God. Now let me tell you, if you have a decision, if you have got a determination in your life that you are living for the purposes of God, that your existence is for the glory of God, I'll tell you something, God will accomplish what he has planned to do in your life. Can I, can I get a witness in the house of the Lord? So you have to be very careful as to what is the greatest objective of your life. Can you say the greatest objective of my life is the glory of God, is the glory of the King, is the glory of the Son of God. That's my greatest objective in life. Now if you have accepted that foundational precept that would have ramifications for your eternal destiny, I want to bring to the practical details of that particular truth. The next line would be the practical one. For I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me. You know what? When you have a moment with your friends, when you have a moment with your relatives, when you have a moment with your colleague, what are you talking about? Paul says, I've got nothing to talk about. I have nothing else to talk about. The only thing that I can talk about is what Christ did through my life. Come on. Let me tell you, that's my story. That's Anison's story. I've got nothing to talk about. I've got nothing that I can speak about myself. It's all what Christ has done through my life. Can somebody, can you make this your life or your future? If you make that your life, it is God who's going to do it for you. It's no more you struggling and you trying to, you know, grab hold of your purpose and trying to, you know, become absolutely determined and pushing and shaking and dragging and, and kicking and, and all that kind of feeling of, I mean, disappointment and depression and also frustration. You don't have to be there. You don't have to go through that. If you know everything that has happened in your life is what Christ has done in your life, you can be sure he will accomplish everything that God Christ now the word accomplish is anybody wants to hear the word accomplish the word accomplish is a Greek word and I want to bring that word to your attention and some of you receive this as a prophetic word because this is a prophetic word okay here is the meaning of the word accomplish let me give it to you the word accomplish means to work out fully and thoroughly, to accomplish or achieve an end, to fin finish or carry something to its conclusion. That means if God has started something, He has a conclusion. To work so as to bring something to fulfillment or successful completion and implies doing something with thoroughness. It means to do that from which something will result. That means it is not blind shooting of an arrow. There will be some result. That's the word accomplish. And I'm here to declare over every one of you, if you are abandoned to the purposes of God in your life, you take this as a word from the eternal throne of heaven that will never change. God will bring some glorious conclusion and results out of what he has already started in your life. If you can believe that, can you give a Lord a praise in the house of a Lord? God will bring... Somebody say this in your heart and I want you to respond this by faith. Some faith proclamation gesture that God is a God that will bring results. Now you didn't hear that. You don't have to repeat what I said, but at least can you respond by some gesture to this truth. God is a God who will bring results. Come on. Every meeting, every prayer that is from Him, every fasting that is from Him, every preaching that is from Him, every prophecy that is from Him will produce a result. Can somebody shout a hallelujah? Let me tell you, God's economy is well protected. He doesn't have waste stages. He is not a politician. 
He will not invest his power on somebody just because he wants to bring some goosebumps on your body. Come on. He's not sending that power on you so you can feel electricity for five minutes. If it is from God, if it is from God, you can be sure there will be a result that's going to come out of it. Can I? Now, anybody in this place who can believe God's work will produce result, I want you to put your hands together, give a Lord a praise in the house of the Lord. It will produce I think we have to be very careful in being very defining when it comes to things of God. We can't just be arbitrary and random and say, you know what, ah, I had a power and then don't expect much to come out of it. Those days are over. If it is from God, if it was truly from God, it should have a result. I want somebody to hold God. Don't hold me because I'm preaching what God's word says. Hold God to this truth. Are you ready to put that into test? If it is from God, it will produce a result. If you believe that, can you make a noise in the house of the Lord? So, so let me tell you, if it is from God, you can always be sure of these two lines. So that. That's a result. So that. My family was touched. So that the church grew. So that a healing happened. So that my prayer life increased. So that I have got more faith than before. Oh, I had this mighty power of God, but I don't know for what. You should be able to say so that. Not for what. So that. Is anybody willing to be very sure everything that God, God, God for His glory has started in your life will have a so that result? If you believe that, make your faith known right now. Come on. So that. If you really believe that, give a Lord a praise in the house of a Lord. Can you tell at least two people, I'm going to have a so that. Come on. Everything that God did in this church, there's going to be a so that. So that. Tell, tell somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody so that. Say it out, say it out. So that. Pastor, so that. Everything that God has started, everything that God is doing, there will be a so that. If you really believe that, come on, make it as strong as you can. There's going to be a so that in your life that you can show it to others, you can show it to yourself, you can show it to your neighbor and say, look what the Lord has accomplished through this. So that. I'm laying it out there. I'm going to be a preacher of God's word. Just the way it is. And I leave the result to him. So that from Jerusalem and all the way, the word is roundabout. I like that word because it came to me in a dream. Luricum, I fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I looked at that thing, Luricum, roundabout. Let me tell you. Can I just give you some truth over some history? Maybe in one minute. One minute. Okay, there we go. Where did it go? Mm. Thank you, Jesus. I have to find another way of doing it properly. Okay, here we go. What is this about Lyricum? A man by the name Newell has written a beautiful writing on it. What a marvelous, absolutely tireless labor, love labor of this man, Paul. Lyricum was the next province of Italy. And by the way, Lyricum is, is now is part of Yugoslavia the former Yugoslavia. Between Jerusalem and Lyricum lay the province of Syria with its capital at Damascus. But its spiritual capital was Antioch. And next to it was Cilicia with its great center Tarsus, Paul's own home from where he was dispatched by the brethren when he was attacked in Jerusalem and from where Barnabas brought him into the ministry. Next province was Pamphylia, with Pergua and Atalia, and above that Pisidia, centered at another Antioch, then Lycaonia, and then Galatia, and then he went to Ephesus, and then he had the mighty work in Troas, and then he came to Aegean Sea through Macedonia, and then he came to Philippi, and then he had Berea, Thessalonica, and let me tell you, Achaia, and, and Corinth, 
he was able to take the gospel into all this major metropolis, major cities in a short span of time. Let me tell you something. When God is the one working in your life, you're not going to be excited about one launching point or one landing strip. You are going to stand there and move to the next and move to the next and move to the next. Can I get... Anybody wants an anointing of your life? Can you make, come on, you had some glory moment. You had some wonderful moment. You had some wonderful move of God. But that's going to be the starting point. You're going to go from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. Can somebody shout a hallelujah? Oh, this is, a, I can sense the power of God when I said that. This is a prophetic word. Paul, you're going to fulfill of course, you had a mighty move of God in Antioch, but that's not going to be the end of your book, your biography. You had a move of God in Iconium, a lame man started to walk, but that's not the end of your life. You're going to have it roundabout. You know what roundabout means? It's a full circle. Meaning, you know, the Lord showed me a dream and said, you are entering the roundabout of your life. And in the dream, I'm asking, what does it mean? And the Lord told me, once you get into a roundabout, there's a rule. You cannot stop in between. The rule of a roundabout is you cannot stop your vehicle in between, in the middle of a roundabout. You need to keep on going, keep on going. And the Lord told me to tell you, your roundabout is about to happen in... Uh, can I get a shout of hallelujah? The roundabout for this church is happening from one to another to another to another till the, the whole purpose of God is accomplished. I want somebody who wants a roundabout anointing in your life. A roundabout to Luricum and fulfill the ministry of the gospel of Christ. The word fulfill means, it doesn't mean that he preached to everyone. That's not the meaning. It just simply means whatever God had asked me, asked me to do, I fully finished. If it's five people, I've done it. Thousand, that, that, that's God's plan, I've completed it. One, I've completed the full course. Every place. You know, I'm seeing a vision right now. Somebody who has seen a glory of God, but it seems that there's a, there's a tent now put in that place as if that's going to be your final resting place. I'm here to say, I'm not going to give you what the priest would give you when you're about to die. Come on. Because I don't believe you're going to die here. Break that tent because a new opening is coming into your life and that's connected to something else. That's connected to something else. That's connected... If you really believe that, can you give a Lord a declarative hallelujah in the house of a Lord? That's the word. That's the word. And thus, I make it my ambition to preach the gospel not where Christ has already been named. Lest I build on someone else's foundation. You know what? Paul was very particular. One, everything that happens in his life. Let me tell you, not one ministry I started. The big ministries that you're talking about, he did it. I didn't even know. I would walk into a room, a ministry is open. I will shake hand with somebody, a nation is open. Because I can say today, not one ministry that Anison is connected to, I did it. Christ did. But Paul had some principles. Let me touch upon it for a minute or two. He said, one, it has to be Christ, completely Christ. And then it is a circle that God has given me. I complete a roundabout. Once you get in a roundabout, no stopping. Tell us, can you believe this? If God is giving you a roundabout, that means you can't stop. You can keep on, need, keep on, you need to keep on going. And that's a reason many countries have removed roundabouts. Because people were finding it difficult to follow this law. Doesn't matter what car is coming, you just keep, once you're on the roundabout, keep going. But this man had a principle. He said, I will not preach the gospel 
where Christ already preached. And then he made us, lest I build on someone else's foundation. You know what's the biggest problem that we face in the Christian world now? Everybody wants to copy somebody. Prophets want to copy another prophet. Evangelists want to copy another. I want to be like Ben Hinn. I want to talk like Ben Hinn. I want to preach like Reynard. I, I, I want to do this. It's not just a style. Sometimes you can't help it. If you're walking with somebody for some time, you'll have their style. Hello? If somebody starts to act like me, I won't be surprised. Hello? But I'm not talking about style, I'm talking about substance. I see prophets who are behaving like somebody else did it and they just simply copy it. Oh, seed money, let's do it. Or this one, let's do it. Paul had a very strong decision. I will not build on somebody else's foundation. I will only do what Christ. Let me tell you, we are not going to stimulate growth in this church. We are not going to orchestrate growth in any human form. When it comes, it comes. And God has promised, if it is God's will, it will happen. Huh? Can I get a witness in the house of the Lord? Huh? The only thing I know is to pray and fast before God. And the right time, the Lord will do the miracle. Can somebody help me? So people that come to a church, sometimes they can get what programs we have for this, we have for that. Let me tell you, the only program that I know be led by the Holy Spirit and He will do it according to His plan. Can, come on, can I get a witness in the house of the Lord? Is there anybody who is happy with this style? That, that style must be from the Holy Spirit. We are not following the agape course, the, the, the other course, and this course, and that course. We are following the leadings of the Holy Spirit. Can somebody shout a hallelujah? Come on, hallelujah. You know, I'm not against those things. You know, I thank God for experiencing God with Henry Blackaby. I love that course. You know, I love the other courses. But let me tell you, Paul was different. He said, I've got one intention in life. Every step that I take must be led. Christ must be doing it. It's not me doing it. It's not somebody else that I'm copying. I want a foundation that is Christ, the foundation, the Word of God, the foundation. Science Church will have a unique foundation, and that's the Word of God. And the leadings of the Holy Spirit. This is a moment that I look for some kind of, Pastor, we are with you, kind of a response. How many of you want to say, Pastor, we want the original in this place? We want the original. We are not here looking at some, I mean, preacher, some prophet, some evangelist, some system. God has a plan for Zion. God has a plan for Edmonton. And so be it. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, that's, if you're going to let God be God and let him do what he has to do, this will be the testimony. Can I read verse number 19 for you? 18 or 19. Can I go there? How is God going to do it? I want the church to believe it. 18 and 19. Okay. For I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me to bring the Gentiles to obedience by word and by deed. That means it will not just be talking, it will be also action. <laughs> but the next two words, if you are willing God to be God, this is what he's going to do. Can I read verse number 19? The future of our church, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on, if anybody wants to join this bandwagon, put your hands together. Give a Lord a praise in the house of the Lord. Let me tell you, this program is supernatural. We will have nations. Somebody say yes. 
we will have hundreds of millions to give. Somebody say yes. We will have orphanages and poor, oh, eh, poor people homes, old age homes. We will minister to nations and millions of souls because of the power of the Holy Spirit of God. That will be our program. Let me ask you today, anybody in this place who wants to be part, enroll for this program where the whole thing is going to be by the power of the Holy Spirit. If he wants to bring programs out of it, let him do it. But the Holy Spirit, let him take the lead role. If you want that, can you make me feel I've got some company in this place? Come on, can I get a shout? Can I get some? Pastor, big things are going to happen in this city. Big things are going to happen in this church. Big things are going to happen through this church across the globe because of the power of signs and wonders and the Holy Ghost and the power that raised Jesus from the dead. If the Holy Spirit is working, it shall be done. Can I repeat that word once again? If the Holy Spirit is a one working, it's not about your limitation. It's not about your circumstances. It's not about your weakness. It will be about His power, His glory. Can somebody make an agreement in the house of the Lord? It will be, you will be able to complete what God has called you. Now let me give you a couple of more instructions, then we'll go to the next topic next week or so when I come back. Let's keep reading. So here it goes. And thus I make it my ambition to preach the gospel, not where Christ has already been named, lest I build on someone else. But as it is written, those who have never been told of him will see, and those who have never heard will understand. When you walk in God's plan, you're fulfilling what God had decreed in heaven. It's not about your small little plans. You will be doing something but God says, this is what I had planned in heaven. You will be conforming to what is written, what God has spoken. Next word. This is the reason why I have so often been hindered from coming. I had to cancel my own plans. I had to cancel my own longings. I had to cancel my own agenda because God had a plan that he was accomplishing. Church, if a young people needs to hear a message for this generation, this is a message. Because we don't have patience anymore. We don't even know patience is a virtue. We have no idea of patience. We will give it's like strike three, God, you're out. I'll take up matters on, in my hands. But Paul made a decision. Let my other plans be hindered. Till God's great purpose. Anison had so many other, I'm inborn, inbuilt evangelist. But I had to say, God, I've got invitations from Africa, other places, but God, you're doing something here. If my longings are hindered because of a greater purpose of God, you're blessed. Everything else means nothing. I decree and I declare every other conversation about your own life means big nothing. If your life is about his plans, for his glory, his kingdom, then even hindrance is a good thing. Oh, you didn't hear me. For this reason, I was hindered from coming to you. But something has changed. And that's the prophetic word I want to release. Get ready, put on your seat belt, because we are going to hit a higher notch.
in the prophetic realm. God is doing something mighty. This is the moment. Let's read. But now, there was a moment where God himself, because of his purpose, hindered some grand plans for your life. But now, but now, if you really believe that you are living for the purposes of God, I want you to strongly and with faith declare, but now, something is about to shift. But this is not for everybody. There's not people, you know what, I'm doing my little things, I want God's help. No, my whole life is about him. I have nothing else. But now, since I have no longer have any room for work in these regions, you know what is, the, how do you know you're going to the next shift? That the hindrance is over? What once excited you will not excite you as much as before. Something else is now taking over. And I have been in that place for some time. I can see some beautiful things, but I know something big is coming. Paul says, now I don't feel a room. I don't feel I'm connected. Because since I have longed for many years to come to you, because the work is accomplished. The Lord is telling me to tell you, some of you are just about to enter the next phase. If you believe that, make an agreement in the house of the Lord. You are about to enter. Yes. Those were glory moments. Yes, there were powerful places. Yes, I've seen some healings, but I don't feel I've got room for it anymore. Because something bigger is coming. I'm declaring over Zion Church, by faith I decree and declare, we are entering the next stage of our ministry. If you believe that, shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord. Yes. Since I've longed for many years to come to you, something that God had put into you as a longing is going to reactivate it. You know what I'm seeing in my spirit? Some of your dreams that you had put behind on the back burner, the Holy Spirit is taking it out. Because the time has come. Your future is connected to a greater purpose of God, a greater plan of God. And that's a season that you're about to enter. If you want that word for your life, make a gesture and say, that's for me. Come on, somebody receive it as a prophetic word for your life. That's for me, Pastor. Can you receive it, receive it, receive it? That's, come on, make it your personal that's for me. I know the hindrance is coming to an end. I know the free flow is going to come because I sense that God has already accomplished the first phase. And the second phase is about to begin. But can I see at least two or three people. You don't have to run to the friend, but do something to make it personal. Even when he's talking about his greatest longing, look what he says. Look what Paul says. That's the reason I love that man, that apostle. 24. But I hope to see you in passing. He's making his greatest desire as a passing desire. Because even my greatest plans it's just a passing plan in connection to the bigger plan of God. Can somebody make? 
If you believe that, put your hands together. I sense an anointing right now, 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 right now. Even my great plan is in passing. Yes, we are talking about a humongous building for this church that has been a longing. We are talking about millions of funds for the gospel that has been a longing. But today, I lift my hand in acknowledgement. Even those plans are in passing. Come on, hallelujah. It must be... Con can I hear somebody? There's an anointing of leadership rising up from this place. That plan is also a plan in passing. It's connected to something bigger. Something bigger. That's not the end of all. That's not the end of all. It's just a plan. You know why I sat down? Because something tells me I don't even have to stand and be exempted. Many of you are walking, believing this. So even if I sit, it's a message for all of us. It's a message for all of us. The greatest longing that I had is also longing in passing because something bigger connected to end time revival is about to happen. If you believe that, can you make a sound in the house of the Lord? That's the reason why God brought you to this point. <laughs> can I say something to you? Only people have got a connection in your heart for something very big. Just brace yourself for this because there's a tornado of a prophetic word. Brace yourself. Why is pain? Paul says, I'm coming to Rome. That is my longing. But even that it's connected to a big picture. This man always was able to hide his plan within bigger plan. He knew that. That's apostolic. An apostle does not live in the moment. He sees into 25, 30, 50 years. At this time, Spain was experiencing a kind of blaze of genius. Many of the greatest men in the empire were Sp Spaniards. Lucan, the epic poet. Martial, the master of epigram. Quintilian, the great teacher of and orator of the day, were all Spaniards. Above all, Seneca, the great Stoic philosopher, who was a guardian and afterwards a prime minister of Nero, was a Span Spaniard or Spaniard. It may be well that Paul was saying to himself that if only he could touch Spain for Christ, tremendous things might happen. He knew, this is William Barclay who wrote this, he knew if he could touch Spain, this could send a spiral move of God across the globe. And I'm here to declare some of you are entering the next stage. And God says, your big desires are going to be in passing. Because it's connected to something that is humongous. Something that can have an impact across the globe. If you want that in your life, can somebody... Come on, can somebody make your faith known right now? Even my greatest... Desires is in passing. I remember saying this few months back. I might rejoice about in our new building for a few weeks. But I'll move on. Because that's not my end. I could very well see a thousand people worshipping here. But I will move on. 
Because I know there's a revival coming. If you want your life and your greatest plan to be in passing to the greatest in passing so that it will connect to the greatest purpose of God that will have a global implication. Can you make a sound of joy in the house of the Lord? Something bigger. Something. Come on. Make it your personal moment right now because an anointing is coming upon you right now. Something bigger is connected to your future. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Are you ready to accept your mantle, your mandate? You're connected to something much bigger. If that's your call, hindrance is being removed. Why should you have a house connected to a bigger picture? Why should you have a new vehicle if you're not connected to the purpose of God? Why should God even care? You can be on the waiting list. Everything is in passing. Whether you have a business, you have a marriage, you have children, you have finance, everything in passing. So I can touch the eye of the heaven. I can touch the eye of the divine cyclone. That's my purpose. But I asked the Lord, what should I do while this transition is happening? He told me something very powerful. Why am I hindered now? Another reason why I'm hindered. Next word. I might go back to this preaching again. At present, how I'm going to Jerusalem, bringing aid to the saints. For Macedonia have been pleased to make some contributions to the poor among the saints of Jerusalem. Next word. You know what he's saying? I've got this big desire. But right now, I'm doing something for the saints of God. Your grand plan should not stop you from doing what you're supposed to do today. You know the word Paul used there? I'm doing service. The word is a very, very, very menial kind of a word. It's called diakonos in the Greek. You know what it means? I'm going to serve some people. It's not glamorous. But while God is taking me into greater plans, I will serve the body of Christ. Some of you are waiting for that grand day when God can grandly use you like a Reynard Bonke. But today, when you are alive, serve God. Can I get a witness in the house of the Lord? Serve the Lord when you can, when you're alive. The word is a word that shows. You know what? It's so difficult when you're looking for a worldwide revival. What you're doing now is praying for somebody, getting those text messages, little irritations. God says, just do it. I will release you. Church, our church will fail if we don't understand this truth. Whatever small things that God has called us to do while we are waiting for the big, let's do it. If it's praying for somebody, do it. Cooking for somebody, do it. Paul knew how to balance his life 
but here is one word I want to proclaim and then we go to the Lord's table. Are you ready? Next verse. I will leave for Spain by way of you. Next verse. I know that when I come to you, I will come with the fullness of the gospel, of the blessings of Christ. The Lord told me to tell our church, when the next stage begins for you, you will not be a pauper. Whatever God has called you to do in the next phase of your life, you will say, I still have the anointing. I still have the power of God. I still have the riches of Christ. I still have the gospel in me. You cannot go to the next phase if you don't have the fullness of Christ in your life, in your being. Can somebody say yes today in the house of the Lord? You cannot go. You know, people wait and wait and wait. And when they, the time comes for God to use them, they've got nothing empty. Gone. Depressed. But I can say today joyfully, if God tells me the next stage for you is started anything, I can say I'm going with the fullness of Christ. I still have the Holy Spirit. I still have the gospel. I still have the power that raised Jesus from the dead. I still have the faith in Christ. Can somebody who knows you have Christ for the next journey, can you put your hands together, give a Lord a praise in the house of the Lord? Are you having what it takes for the next journey?